Hello guys and welcome back to week four and our final week of our summer series about the parables that Jesus told. It's been so great, hasn't it, to follow through the different stories that Jesus told, sharing the meaning that he has in his heart for us. Yeah. And I love that each week we've been able to learn something more or new about the character of God, yep. about how much he loves us and how we should live our lives in response to that. Absolutely. Not just knowing the truth of God's word, yep. but being able to put that into practice. That's where the real transformation happens. Just like we learned in week one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really excited about today because today is a parable that you probably have heard before. It is quite a well-known parable. But the heart and the message of this parable is something that we can be reminded of every time we dive into this parable. Something that changes the lives, not only of you, but of those around you as well. It's pretty exciting. It is such an exciting parable. It kind of reads like a movie script. It's a great one. You're really going to enjoy the parable this morning. So let's head now to the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Miracle of Mercy, the Good Samaritan. This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait! The man then asked, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. Ah! They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> by chance, a priest came along. <laughs> Hey. But when he saw the man lying there, Ugh, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. Please help. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Ah. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. What an amazing story as we saw the Good Samaritan share his love with that poor guy who was on the side of the road. Mm. It was a great example, wasn't it? It really was. And we have been able to learn that we really do need to choose to show sacrificial kindness yeah. to others, even when it's really hard. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it makes such a difference to those around us. When we do show that kindness, that sacrificial kindness, mm. it changes the world of those people that receive that kindness around us. And I really love the fact that we've chosen to use the word sacrificial mm. kindness because, you know, kindness often costs us something. 
it might cost us time, it might cost us energy, it, it might mean we don't get to go and do something that we like to do, or like in the story we saw today, it might cost us our resources, like our time. Yeah. But ultimately, showing sacrificial kindness to others is doing what Jesus has asked us to do. Yeah. And you know, Matt, it's really incredible because the ultimate act of sacrificial kindness is the fact that Jesus came and died on the cross to forgive each and every one of us. Absolutely. He mm. gave his life as a way of demonstrating that sacrificial kindness to us. And, you know, every time we do the same thing, we are sharing in the ways of Jesus. So maybe it's your toys or it's your turn or it's your spot, whatever that is. But to sacrifice that for kindness to other people mm. is when we're sharing in what Jesus has done for you and for me. That's right. We hope that you guys have enjoyed our summer series as much as we have, as we've dived into these parables and learn more about God and his character and the way that he loves each and every single one of us. And Matt, before yep. we head off, do you know what is really exciting? Mm, going back to school? That is exciting for most. Exciting. Yes, yes. But one of the other really exciting things is we can't wait to see you guys in February back at church. I know, it's gonna be great. It really is. So. <laughs> Stay tuned to our Facebook pages and all of our social media to find out more information about how you can come back and join us here at church come February. We can't wait to see you guys really soon. Bye guys.